So this right here is a brand new gaming laptop from ASUS, the ROG Strix SCAR 15. Uh, it was announced at CES this year and it comes with a lot of new hardware. So it has the latest 12th gen Intel CPU, the i9-12900H, uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory for the very first time, a 240 hertz Quad HD display and a brand new RTX 3070 Ti GPU. Now, unfortunately, the GPU is still under NDA for a few more days, so I cannot really talk about the gaming performance, but I can talk about this new Alder Lake mobile processor from Intel. So today uh, we're going to see how well it performs, how power hungry it is, and how it will impact your battery life as well as thermals and noise. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So Intel is launching quite a few mobile processors and as usual they kind of split them up into several categories. So you have the H series uh, or the high performance CPUs that are made for enthusiast laptops like this car right here. Uh, then you have the U series that have lower power and are meant for thin and light laptops. And then you have the P series which kind of falls in between the two. Now the 12900H that's in this laptop is at the top of the H series list along with the i9-12900HK and it has six performance cores, eight efficiency cores and 20 threads. The new i7 processors, the 12800H and the 12700H have the exact same core layout but their boost speeds are slightly lower which means uh, that some cheaper systems that use these i7s should be able to get close to the results that we will see today. But the i7-12650H, for example, has fewer cores and fewer threads. And if we look at the i7 from the U series, it has only two performance cores. So you really need to make sure uh, that you know what you're buying when you're getting a new laptop. Uh, just saying i7 or i5 is not really enough to know what should you expect from it. But let's talk performance. Now, the best I can do here is to compare this laptop to several other laptops that I've tested in recent years. First of all, it is impossible just to compare laptop CPUs directly because other parts of the laptop, like the memory and the cooling solutions, also affect performance. Uh, but most of these laptops in the list are quite similar as they're all kind of performance-focused models. And I guess that will be you know, close enough. Now, starting with Cinebench R20, uh, this new model absolutely destroys the best CPUs from last generation. It is 40% faster than the fastest laptop in this graph so far, which is the M16 with an i9-11900H, and it is 50% ahead of the Ryzen 9 5900HX in the ROG Strix G15 from last year. It also flat out embarrasses the i7-11370H that was launched a year ago uh, and that offers about a third of the performance of this new i9. It doubles the score of the 10 and 980HK in the MSI GE76 and it scores three times higher than the SCAR from 2019 that had an i7-9750H. In Cinebench R23, which I started using more recently, it is about 50% faster than the Ryzen 9 5900HX, and again, it is a huge upgrade from the SCAR from 2019. Now, this Cinebench also runs longer than the R20, so these results are much more consistent as you don't have laptops uh, first pushing their limits for a minute or so and then throttling. And I would say R23 catches that better. In Blender, which is a real world application that relies heavily on your CPU, uh, we can see the same thing. It completes almost 30% faster than the fastest laptop before it, so if you do a lot of rendering, for example, uh, you can really cut down the time required to do it. Now, single thread performance uh, looks fantastic as well. So in Cinebench R20, I got a score of 728, uh, which is about 20% faster than the M16 that has the 11900H and around 30% faster than the fastest AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And this should translate into great gaming performance as well, but as I said at the start, I cannot really talk about gaming performance just yet. But the CPU 
performance is just fantastic because uh, getting a 30 to 40 percent increased performance in one generation is actually extremely rare uh, but i would say there is a reason for that so a large part of that extra performance comes from a much higher power consumption uh, and if we look back to Intel's spec sheet, uh, we can see that the 12900H can run up to 115 watts, which is quite a bit more than the 45 watts on the 11900H. But the spec sheets don't always tell the whole story. So the M16 with the 11900H was typically using around 70 watts, while this car was actually going up to 120 to 130 watts during a multi-threaded stress test. And that is a huge amount of power for a laptop. So in a way, they're like desktop older lake CPUs. So they will happily consume a ton of power if you let them, but they will still perform really well if you also restrict them a little bit. And we can see that when we swap the laptop's profile from turbo to performance mode, uh, which is a bit more balanced, I would say. So CPU power draw gets limited to around 70 to 75 watts, which is very similar to the 11900H, and kind of allows us to do a bit more of a fair comparison between the two. And while the performance is a bit lower than in the turbo mode, it is still a lot faster in multi-threaded applications than anything else from last gen. Plus, it maintains the same high single thread performance as in the turbo mode, but that was also expected. So I would say no matter which mode you pick, it is still a huge improvement. But what surprised me the most was how well this laptop handled that high CPU power. Now many high performance laptops are usually struggling with CPU thermals and we were usually seeing temps in high 80s and high 90s with some laptops even coming close to 100 degrees Celsius on their CPUs and that's with CPUs using less than 70 watts. While here, even in the turbo mode with a CPU burning up to 120-ish watts, the SCAR holds it at around 90 degrees Celsius with the fans doing 47.3 decibels at 50 centimeters distance. Now, that would be a pretty typical result for older models, but I would actually say it is pretty impressive considering the 50 watts of access heat that this laptop has to deal with. And it gets a lot better in performance mode with the CPU being at 83 degrees Celsius and measuring only 32.5 decibels at 50 centimeters distance. Now, I have never heard a gaming laptop make this little noise during a stress test. Uh, even one of the quieter laptops I tested last year, so the Razer Blade Pro 15, measured around 37 decibels here. Now, obviously, this is more of a complement to ASUS than to Intel, uh, but it is still a huge quality of life improvement, and it's so nice to not have your laptop fans blow constantly while trying to work or while trying to edit a video, for example. So usually, with every new generation of laptops, uh, they also had a better battery life during idle or light tasks, and even though a battery life is even harder to compare between all these different specs, uh, we can at least get a rough indication, and it looks like like the 12th gen gaming laptops will not be outperforming the last gen when it comes to battery life. So in a light Netflix test, I got around seven and a half hours, which is not bad for a gaming laptop. And it is a lot better than my SCAR that barely survived too. Uh, but the 2021 Strix G15 with a Ryzen 9 and otherwise similar specs lasted for over nine hours. So for now, it looks like AMD might still beat Intel when it comes to battery life. Anyway, uh, that is actually it for today. Again, a laptop is so much more than just a processor and we'll have to wait for a few more models to come out and a few more NDAs to expire to really get a complete picture here. Uh, but based on this machine alone, I would say that these 12th gen mobile CPUs are incredibly promising and a huge upgrade over anything that we've seen before. Uh, but before you just rush off to the store and buy yourself one, I do think you should wait a tiny bit longer to see what AMD will do with their new mobile processors, which are actually also launching pretty soon. Either way, I think it's a very interesting year for laptops and I cannot wait to get my hands on a few more. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you're interested in a full review of this SCAR laptop with all the proper gaming tests and results, uh, it should go live in a couple of days. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss it. Bye guys and see you in the next one.